So the next that we are going to be looking at is uh, the calibration of the final control element, which is uh, the valve. Okay. So like every other that we have looked at, it's the same thing. Okay. Remember, the valve is used to control the flow of fluid. Are we getting it? And uh, we do that by adjusting the position of uh, the disc. So in this case, when there is no signal, we expect it to be fully open. Then when we have the maximum signal, we expect it to be fully closed. So the control pressure that is always sent to valves is between 3 to 15 PSI. 3 to 15 PSI. So what will happen in case we are calibrating this kind of valve, okay, that needs signal to close. When it is 3 PSI, we don't expect any movement on the valve. Then as we are gradually increasing, we expect to see some movement, okay. Then we will take it to about 20%, 25% movement position. That 25% will correspond to about 6 PSI. So we expect the stem to have traveled that 25% at 6 PSI. Then when we are applying 9%, uh, 9 PSI, we expect it to have traveled 50% of uh, the travel, the distance that is expected. Okay? Then 12 PSI, we expect it to have traveled 75%. Then 15 PSI, we expect it to have traveled 100 percent that is to be fully closed, as in this case. Okay? So, what we do in calibrating the valve is to look at this stroke indicator. In most cases, it is marked 0, 25, 50, 75, and 100. Are we getting it? So when we apply, when we are increasing the pressure, when, once it is 3 PSI, we don't expect any movement, so it should be at zero. Okay, so this one is signal to close. Forward acting, here is supposed to be zero. We have 25, 50 in the middle, 75 and 100, okay? Now, if there is no signal, if there is no signal and the signal is increasing to three, it's supposed to be zero so as it's going beyond we notice some movement when it increases to six we'll see it on the 25 percent mark increase it to nine psi okay we will increase it to nine psi we expect it to be at the 50 percent mark we increase it to 12 psi we expect it to be at the 75 percent mark and then at the 100 percent mark it is a fully closed position that is 15 psi so when we go take the valve to the workshop that is what we will uh, be doing so if the valve position is not the same as what we expect it to be then we will now adjust this uh, valve stem until we have that particular position and be sure that the disc is traveling with the stem also. So we we'll take the reading in the forward direction as we'll see later. I'll we'll take it in the reverse direction to ensure repeatability. If there is no repeatability, if the repeatability is uh, poor or is not repeatable, it could be that this packing will be too tight. Okay, is here. We can adjust by slacking this knot, uh, free the packing a little, the, so that the stem can travel freely, then we'll carry out the calibration tests again, okay? So let us see how we can also do it with uh, the calibrator. Remember, the calibrator can send the signal to your IP converter, okay? The 4 to 20 milliamp signal. So when we send the 4 milliamp signal, the regulator will admit 3 PSI, okay, into the actuator of the valve. Then when we send um, 
8 million, which is equivalent to 25% of what is expected on their Twitter, then the VAR should travel about, uh, uh, the regulator should administer about 6 PSI. Okay? Then when we give 12 milliamps, which is 50% expectation, regulator should uh, admit 12 PSI. Okay? And then 20 milliamps, regulator should admit uh, 15 PSI. So as we are doing that, we are looking at the stroke position, the valve travel. Are you getting it? If it is uh, at the right position, okay, that corresponds with the current that we are sending in, then the valve is uh, okay. But if not, then we need to make the necessary adjustment. Okay? We can do that by the adjusting the screw on the plugs, the plug stem, okay, and then first loosening the lock nut and then adjusting the screw, okay. So this is the lock nut on the screw. Then we adjust the screw. I will get it to get the actual position. So this is what we are discussing. Send the appropriate air signal. Okay, and then watch the movement. And that movement, you see it on the stem position scale or indicator. So if we take the reading and it's not giving us the right reading, we make the appropriate adjustment at 0, 100, then we'll not try others in between. So this is the, the recording and the valve position. So when we send 4 milliamp signal to the regulator, we expect the regulator to admit 3 PSI to the valve actuator, okay? So that zero, uh, 3 PSI, we don't expect any movement. But as we increase it beyond the 3 PSI, we expect to see uh, that it's beyond 4 milliamp. We expect the pressure of air admitted into the actuator to go beyond 3, to be increasing beyond 3. So as it moves to 6 PSI, corresponding to 8 milliamps, we expect the valve movement to be 25%, okay? 9 PSI, 50%, 12 PSI, 75%, and 15 PSI, 100%, as we said before, okay? If it is not, the valve position does not correspond with any of these, then we can make the necessary adjustment to ensure that it corresponds. Then we we'll also take the reverse uh, reading also, okay? That is, when it is 15 PSI, it's giving us 100% 100 position. Then we we'll reduce the pressure to 12 PSI. We expect it to be at 75. We reduce it to 9 PSI. We expect it to be at 50. We reduce it to 6 PSI. We expect it to be at 25. Then 3 PSI, the fully closed or fully open position, depends on the kind of valve or the mode of actuation that we are looking at on the valve. So once it does not correspond to this, we make the necessary adjustments on those adjustment screws to either lift or drop the stem. And then that's we're losing the lock nut, make the adjustment that we said earlier, carry out the test again to see that what we are having here is what we have. So once we have this, it means that the final control element, which is the valve, is within calibration. So we can now return the valve back to the field, okay? So when it is fully closed, we expect the stem to be fully seated, uh, sorry, the disc to be fully seated on the seat. Are we getting it? So if it is not seated, we can do the adjustment of uh, the screw, okay? To push it down and maybe uh, push it down a little so that it will be fully seated. We will expect the disc also to be fully open when it is at the 100% uh, position as the stem, the stem travel, okay? 
which will be indicated by this positional arm. This positional arm. Are we getting it? Okay, so the scale is expected to be okay. Look at the scale here. So the IP converter also needs uh, calibration because if the IP converter is giving us wrong pressure signal when the right current input is going in, okay, we also have problem with our final control element position. So what do we need? We need a regulator, which is this. We need an IP converter, which is this, that will help us to convert from that is the one that we actually want to test, okay? With the master pressure gauge, then a source of current. So which means that when we feed that 4 milliamps, we expect 3 PSI to come out, okay? Then when we feed 8 milliamps into the IP converter, we expect 6 PSI. To be registered on master gauge. So when we put in 12 uh, milliamp into the IP converter, okay, when we put 12 milliamp to the IP converter, we expect the master gauge to read 9 psi. Then when we put 16 milliamps into the IP converter, we expect to have uh, 12 psi here. And of course, when we put 20 milliamps, this is what we are expecting okay so if we get that result it means that uh, our ip converter is working perfect perfectly if not then it means it needs placement okay so the, this is what we are discussing this is the current supply to your regulator okay so uh, to your IP converter I mean to say okay so once it is uh, 20 milliamp okay you expect it to send the signal to fully open this valve so once it is zero you see that no signal is sent the valve is fully closed when it is four the valve as it's increasing you see the valve opening up okay as the current signal is increasing you see the valve opening up and this corresponds to the position that you actually want it to be then everything is fine are we getting it so in this case now you are calibrating the ip converter or you are checking the ip converter together with the valve so definitely you would have calibrated the valve Okay, then you install the IP converter to see that it is actually giving you the actual travel that you expect from the valve stem. Okay, so this has now brought us to the end of uh, improving the reliability of uh, the final control element and uh, the sensors and uh, the transmitters, okay, in your instrumentation system.